Few can argue that the name McLaren stands among the most iconic in motorsports. With a history of success stretching over five decades and a trophy cabinet to match. However, when it comes to McLaren Automotive, the road car division, the story is a bit different. While a Ferrari is steeped in heritage, carrying the legacy of Enzo Ferrari and the weight of tradition, a McLaren feels more like a cutting-edge machine from a company still too young to celebrate its own history over a drink. Since the launch of the MP4-12C in 2011, McLaren Automotive has enjoyed significant success. But the company's short existence means each new car arrives without much historical baggage or gravitas. Even though McLaren has simplified the naming of its models over the years, the cars themselves adhere to a familiar pattern. Pack a ton of advanced technology into something that looks like it could step out of a sci-fi anime, and then build them as quickly as they can sell them. Enter the 2025 McLaren Artura Spider Hybrid. As the lightest convertible supercar on the market, it boasts an electric motor even more power dense than the legendary McLaren P1s and a transmission that's 25% faster than last year's model. True to form, it embodies McLaren's philosophy, sleek, futuristic design combined with an incredibly fast, high-tech drivetrain. For me, this is the perfect introduction to the world of McLaren and the Artura seems like a great place to start. Aesthetically, the Artura is unmistakably McLaren. Apart from the brand's exclusive, limited-edition Ultimate Series models like the P1 and Senna, most McLaren cars have followed an evolutionary design path, looking like progressively angrier and more futuristic versions of the original MP4-12C. While the Artura does have some stylistic updates compared to the 570S it replaces, it doesn't scream new or futuristic at first glance. It simply looks like another McLaren. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, though it might underplay just how thoroughly reworked the Archura truly is. Its carbon fiber monocoque platform is completely new and purpose-built for hybrid drivetrains, making the Archura Spider McLaren's first hybrid convertible. The V6 engine behind the driver is also a first for the company. As for performance, it ticks all the modern supercar boxes. 690 horsepower, 531 pound-feet of torque, a 0 to 124 miles per hour sprint in 8.4 seconds, and a top speed of 205 miles per hour. Despite having an electric roof and a hybrid powertrain, which provides an EPA-rated 11 miles of electric-only driving range, the Archura weighs just 3,439 pounds. In fact, it's 176 pounds lighter than the Ferrari 296 GTS when comparing dry weights. On paper, it's undeniably impressive, which makes it all the more unfortunate that the design doesn't stray far from last year's model. While the styling may not be as timeless or groundbreaking as some other supercars, McLaren still sells every car they produce, and their popularity hasn't waned. Clearly, the appeal runs deeper than just aesthetics. Though the McLaren signature butterfly doors make getting into the cabin a bit tricky, once you're seated, the Archura Spider is surprisingly comfortable. The gauge cluster moves with the steering wheel, so even when adjusted for my taller frame, I could easily read all the displays. The footwell is compact, but even wearing cowboy boots, I had no trouble working the gas and brake pedals. The center touchscreen is within easy reach, yet positioned far enough from the driver's line of sight to avoid obstructing visibility. Blissfully, there are no buttons on the steering wheel. All it does is steer the car, and it's delightful. Toggling between driving modes and suspension settings is a physical affair. A pair of switches at the top edges of the cluster allow you to change on the fly without having to look at any screens or take your hands off the steering wheel. For a car that looks like the personal vehicle of a Gundam pilot, it's shockingly analog inside. It suits a focus on the driving experience so well. And what a driving experience it is. A calm, cool morning in Portland meant I had the top off before my seatbelt was even buckled. I immediately kicked the car from electric to sport mode, giving me the VSXS gnarly tones directly behind my head, aided by the optional sports exhaust, which you must tick the box for on your build sheet. The soundtrack is genuinely excellent and should handily disprove that sporty VSXS need to sound like straight-piped 350ZS. A jaunt through Portland's historic downtown proved that McLaren ride quality is worth the hype. I was driving on cobblestones and all of my fillings stayed in. Potholes and pavement gaps were easily handled without any rough impact or 
or cabin reverberations that drop tops are often prone to. None of this came at the expense of steering accuracy or sharpness, either. Pitching the Archura into a corner, even while still in comfort, it was level, sharp, and perfectly correctable at speed. I lined up at the red light for an on-ramp and gave the Archura full power to merge. It is breathtakingly fast. That electric motor delivers 166 pound-feet of torque at zero miles per hour and gives the McLaren an EV-like neck-whipping sense of acceleration. 60 mph happened in three seconds flat. 60 dash censored arrived faster than I could keep track of as I slammed through gears on the 8-speed. There are other supercars that are a few tenths quicker, sure. But if the Archura isn't fast enough for you, I would suggest seeking therapy to uncover what you're really looking for out of life. Once I calmed down from triple-digit testing, I settled in and watched the sunlight glittering off the glass towers of the skyline dance across the Alconera dash. The interior just feels right for a driver's car. If I got restless, I blipped the gear down, gave it gas, giggled, and relaxed again. Even at the speed limit, it was one of the most enjoyable drives I've had in a while. This is remarkable because usually when I get into a supercar, I feel a need to push it to its limits as much as I can comfortably find them anyway to feel like I'm fully appreciating it. I step out of supercars giddy, but sweaty and sore. The Archura Spider doesn't need to be flogged to be appreciated. I had as much fun working it through some quick mountain twists as I did cruising on the highway, which is not something I'd expect in this class of car. And after shooting these pics of the Archura Spider, on my route back, I pumped up the Bowers and Wilkins system and jammed with the windows down on the streets of Portland. Regardless of whether or not the Archura is a perfect evolution of the company's design language, people love how it looks. If you're driving a supercar, you probably want attention, and this delivers. I got more stares and compliments with this bright blue spaceship in an hour of driving than virtually anything else I've found myself behind the wheel of ever. Perhaps the secret to McLaren's success, then, is that their cars don't need a sense of heritage to sell themselves. If the Archura is any indication, a McLaren is simply fun, wicked fast, and easy to pilot at any speed. They look wild. They're comfortable. I could actually see out of the cabin, even with the roof on, Want livability in a supercar? This one has a five-year powertrain warranty, for God's sake. Gravitas be damned. I'm here to drive, and the Archura Spider is one fantastic car to drive.